Well, you look fantastic, and as the as the song, you, you feel good. You feel good. I do feel good. I do feel good. So I'll begin treatment in a few weeks. Uh -huh. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult getting to the end result, which is gonna be, uh, you know, full full uh, recovery. It's just gonna be a little bit bumpier getting there. But uh, my colleague Joel Siegel, who was so courageous in his battle with colon cancer. I remember his laughter more than anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what he taught me and others who have gone before me, that you have to have that positive joy and laughter in your life no matter what's ahead of you. Yeah, it could make a huge difference. It can. Yeah, it's it attitude. Is. It is attitude. Well, I say it all the time, no matter what you're holding on inside, Ooh. you gotta release it. Whatever that is that you're yeah. holding on you. And it was very emotional. Uh, if you didn't see uh, her talking about this, uh, it, it's, watch, it's very, very emotional. We wanted you to hear from us. Didn't want you to hear it anywhere else. And it's now been able to say it out loud. Uh, I have breast cancer, as my family here knows, my family at home knows. And very, very blessed and thankful that I, I found it early. And yes. um, I detected it. Um, ironically, the day that we did the tribute show for our dear friend Joel Siegel. So you, uh, thank you. It's hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so many people said when they were watching that morning, they heard me said that, say that. You know what they did? Whoop! Yeah. Whoop! Good. Whoop! We got another promo. Good. They did. They did. Whoop! Whoop! Yeah. Whoop! yeah. No, they did. They weren't yeah. expecting someone to. Like, that I, that was what I was going to talk about. And, and but it's good, right? You feel oh, good yeah. about it. Oh yeah, I feel I feel great about it. I What's really do. What's the reaction been since you've talked oh, about it? Oh, Ellen, it's been absolutely overwhelming and so uplifting. It, mm -hmm. it really. It was funny because my mama was fussing with me. My my family's been terrific. My inner they've been just really great. A lot of positive energy, and I had the surgery and I was really ready to come back. And and granted, there are people who go through this that they're not able to. They're not able to come back to work as quickly as as I did, and I was very blessed and fortunate and I wanted to do that. And my mother was like yelling at me, you know, don't take more time. And I came back and I was like, really, uh, I, I felt great because as my doctor said, I was healthier now than before the surgery. And even though I know I have, you know, the treatment that's coming up. And so people were writing in, they said, well, you look really like alive and bright and everything. When you were in for surgery, did you have an eye lift? <laughs> and I'm like going, that ain't what needs lifting, yeah, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. But it was just, uh, it was just, because of the response has been so overwhelmingly positive. And when you know that people all across the country are thinking about you and praying for you and lifting you up in prayer, you can't help but feel good. Yeah. Well, now, now you had not, because, you know, I'm aware of it because my mother had breast cancer and, and had a mastectomy, mm -hmm. and I've, I, so I have to get mammograms on a regular basis. And, but had you had a history in your family? No, and I didn't realize that 80% of people who are diagnosed with breast cancer, no history of it. 80%. No history whatsoever, and I fell into that category. So when I found it, and it was ironic, it was the very day that uh, Joel Siegel, we had a tribute show for him, mm -hmm. and I happened to do the segment on his battle with uh, colon cancer and how he said if he had had a colonoscopy at the age of 50 instead of 53, and how it could have been a different outcome, and that you just have to really be proactive, and also with the early detection. That very night, so I do this story, and it's, it's, it's heavy on my heart, that very night I'm at home, and I'm stretching and whatnot, and then I feel something, and I'm like, no, this can't be. This, no, no, no. And uh, I acted upon it, and it would not have, had it not been for that day and doing the story. And even though I did that, so I, I think I'm doing the great thing. You know, I found, I'm being proactive, make an appointment with the doctor, and he's examining me, and I haven't had uh, an exam for a few years, so I'm letting him do, you know, look under the hood, you know, do, you know, whole, sure. whole thing. Go, go, go look under the hood. He was about to leave the examining room, and I said to him, uh, I, I've got a, a, you know, could you check something out? I was almost, he was almost out of the, I almost checked out. You weren't going to tell him about I the lump? I wasn't going to tell him. Wow. And then I was like, you know, Robin, come on, you're here. This is why you're here. And I, I, I said that to him. And he said, you're going to get up. You're going to go and get a mammogram right now. Saved my life by putting down ultrasound because the cancer was not, the tumor was not detected by the mammogram. It was detected by the ultrasound. Really? And then it just kind of kept rolling from there. Wow. Yeah, it's people, you have to be very diligent, especially, you know, you, I, I had so many people, Ellen, that are writing me and sending me emails, 18 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old with breast cancer. Yeah. It's just, it's just. Got to check crazy. it, got to find it yeah. early. Even though you don't have the history in your family, you got to, because if you catch it, it's, it's, you know, preventable. It is. You get up early and you, you work every single day on the East Coast and you come out here and do the show and I appreciate it so very, very much. Thank you for being here throughout the years. Oh. Always. My pleasure, Ellen. You know. Normally when I come out here, it's because of the Oscars or I have something that's going on. This time, it's just to say thank you.
It's just to say thank you for the joy. Thank you. The laughter, the tears, all of it, all of these years. Thank you. That means so much to me. And then to, to change time zones. I mean, how... It's worth it. It's Well, well thank you. You're and so you're flying back today? Uh, red eye. Red eye back. Uh, but are you? can you sleep on planes? Oh, I can sleep before we get off the tarmac. I mean, I'm like... <laughs> really? Well, I get up at 3.30 in the morning. So when you're on a show like Good Morning America, you, you sleep where you can, so... God. Well, I, uh, it's, well again, you're, thank you. You're thank you. Um, I learned today for the first time, after all these years of knowing you, yeah. that you were a bus driver at, at some point in your life. A school bus driver. A school bus. Like the short bus or the long no, bus? No, no, the big mama. The big mama, yes. Uh, and I was in high school at the time. That seems safe. <laughs> well, see, because I turned... See, see what happened was, uh -huh. uh, because I was turning 18 when I was a senior, and I was on the tennis team, and our coach told us if we didn't have a bus driver, we might have to forfeit the season. So that summer, I went through all the courses and took the classes and everything. But I also was a substitute driver. Can you imagine pulling up, and you open the door, and your classmate sees you behind the wheel of a school bus? No. And they say, you know what, I'll walk. I'll walk yeah. to school. Yeah. But then I would sometimes have to take the car, the, the, car, the, the, the bus home. And we lived in a little you know, residential area, and it was too big for the driveway, so I'd park in the front lawn. And the neighbors really got a kick out of that, Ellen, <laughs> seeing the school bus. They the loved having yeah, that? Yeah, they loved that. It's like putting a sofa on the porch or something, yeah. Same thing. Or a washer and dryer. But so, so you, uh, a yeah. like, giant like that. And, had, it was, and it was on the floor, too. I mean, you had to shift and everything. Oh, it, it was, was old shift. school, because it, it was 19... <laughs> you know, 19... <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> 79, 1979, so... Going, wow. oh, hey, 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 yeah, black don't crack, so, you know, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look fantastic. Thank you. look you. fantastic, and uh, I just want to take a moment to say I know that Amber um, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and uh, y'all have been together for 17 years. I can't imagine how hard it is to, for someone that you love to, to because it's, it's almost harder on you because you want to do something. I haven't talked about it much, but with you, I will. She's doing well, which is great. And just what you said, I went through it twice, barely shed a tear. I'm a puddle every time I think about what Amber's going through, but she is being so courageous and is handling it uh, extremely well. And I'm able to kind of give her a little bit of a roadmap because I've gone through it. But she's also given me a roadmap on how to be a caregiver. And I didn't realize how much I had blocked out during my journey and it was because of Sweet Amber, because she protected me and she navigated for me. So I'm doing the same thing for her. But um, the message here, and you know my mama, make your mess your message. And like many people, she had put off going to the doctor during the pandemic. And then the end of last year, she followed through with a regular exam and it was discovered. And so the message is, get those regular exams. It can save your life. And thankfully, the prognosis is good for her. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. That's great to hear. Woo. Thank you. And it's because they caught it early, too. They At least they got it in time, it which is it's it so really important. Helps. Um, and, uh, you know, talking about, I, I've been doing this for, for 19 years. We started 20 years ago, and you have been on GMA for 20 years. I can't believe that you've been on for 20 years. Oh, why can't you believe that? Because I mean, it I, doesn't I, seem like that long, <laughs> no, does I'm it? I'm just kidding. But I know it doesn't seem that way for me as well. I mean, yeah. it wasn't on my whiteboard uh, when I was driving a school bus that I wanted yeah. to be on Good Morning America <laughs> right. for 20 years. But what a privilege, and you know this, to, for, for folks to uh, invite you into their homes, invite you into their lives. And yeah. I tell you what, I am still excited each and every time I say, Good Morning America, love it, yeah. love it. Well, that's good. That's because if you're getting up at 3.30 in the morning, you better be happy to do that. Exactly.